live. Uh, good day, everybody, and, and greetings from a rather cool Mosgiel uh, this afternoon. It's great to have a couple of folk around for our inaugural meeting of the Center for Open Education Practice. Um, just by, by way of background, uh, uh, you know, New Zealand in, uh, a couple of years ago actually did establish a leadership role around open education. I'm not sure if many of you are aware, but the first tertiary education institution in the world to adopt the default Creative Commons uh, intellectual property policies located here in New Zealand um, at Otago Polytechnic. And, um, you know, that was then followed by the initiatives of NZ Goal, where Crown Copyright is, you know, licensed openly. But in, in some respects, we've fallen a little behind, you know, some of the rest of the world around what is happening in the open education space. I know that a couple of universities have done uh, some interesting work around open access policies. But, you know, other than that, the, we, we are falling a little behind. And so this initiative of setting up the Centre for Open Education is, is really an open conversation for, for us in New Zealand to see what we can do in improving and, and accelerating the adoption of open education. Uh, so just by way of that short introduction, um, I think what we can do is a quick round of introduction of the people who have, are joining us this afternoon. Um, I'll quickly introduce myself. I'm Wayne McIntosh. I'm the Managing Director of the OER Foundation, a nonprofit organization that coordinates the uh, Open Education Resource Universitas. And I also hold the uh, UNESCO Chair in Open Educational Resources here in New Zealand. Um, and I, from here, let's uh, go around the table. I'll go according to the order that we ha that I have listed here uh, for brief introductions. And the first on my list, I have Bruce. Bruce, do you have a mic? Looks like your mic is enabled. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Kia ora tato. Um, I'm Bruce White. I'm um, copyright and open access advisor uh, at Massey University. Uh, I'll. Um, I'll apologise for leaving early, uh, but I'm I'm really interested to see what's what's happening happening in the space. Uh, my my background uh, is is, um, is is in libraries, uh, so I have a bit more to do with um, student textbooks and so on over time. And I've got a quite a strong background um, background in, in open access. Um, so that's me. Kia ora, Kia ora, Bruce, and, and, and welcome. It's great to have Massey with us, and Massey yep. University is yep. one of the I, founding I, I, partners. I won't make it through the whole thing, my apologies. Yep. Quite all right. Thanks, Bruce. Okay. Much appreciated. Good to be here. Great. So just on uh, a, a quick point of order, if you're not speaking, I'd appreciate if you uh, can mute yourself to avoid the uh, echo feedback loop. Um, so we're going through the introductions at the moment. Next on the list here is Claire. Hi everyone, um, my name's Claire Good. So I'm um, in the learning and teaching development team at Otago Poly, and um, half of my role is uh, working on OERU projects with Wayne and Dave in um, Christchurch, um, and Simon as well, who I think is online with us. Um, my background is in language teaching and foundation education. Um, yeah, looking forward to working with everybody and seeing where this goes. Thanks, Claire. Glad, glad you could be with us. Um, next on my list, um, Cheryl from Christchurch. Hi, everybody. I'm Cheryl Brown. I work in the um, University of Canterbury, um, and I also work with Nikki Davis. So if I say Nikki Davis, everyone seems to know where we work and who I am. <laughs> And my interests are, um, I suppose they're very much in the tertiary sector around um, sort of digital access and use. And I'm very passionate about OERs and open, although I haven't really got a strong sort of research trajectory in that. But I've also been delighted to be drawn in with um, Wayne and Claire in the Open Textbook Project. So that's a great opportunity to get to know something of the state of play of um, aspects of open in the New Zealand context. Thank you. Thanks, Cheryl. Um, next on the list, I have uh, Jo Allen. Kia ora koutou. Um, ko jo Allen, uh, toko ingoa. Um, lovely to meet you all. Um, I'm uh, a co-founder of Venture Centre. 
So we're not a tertiary institution, we're a community-led um, education organization, um, specifically around entrepreneurship and learn by doing. Um, so everything we do, literally, is open source and community-led. We work with the tertiaries in our, in our rohi, so Bay of Plenty, um, so that's Toyo Hamai, uh, Waikato University, um, the Kura, the schools, um, and we very much rely on uh, the amazing skills and strengths of our community to teach our, um, our rangatahi and tamariki and each other. Um, so very much a, an open network way outside of uh, the current institutional norm. Um, so I'm here as a bit of a rebel with a cause, I suppose. <laughs> uh, looking forward to working with you all. Kia ora, Jo, and welcome. Um, yeah. Interestingly, the OERU has a, a full set of open courses, Introduction to Entrepreneurship, which actually might be of use uh, to, to the work that you're doing. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Very familiar with, with Dave, Dave Lane and the New Zealand oh, okay. Society. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Right. And, and next on my list, uh, Kath. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hi. everybody. My name is Kath, Kath Danaher, and um, I am working for Otago Polytech Auckland International Campus. Uh, up in Auckland, so I found out uh, the way my way in through here was through Claire and Simon and the uh, learning and teaching team down there in Dunedin. Uh, so I'm learning and teaching uh, one of the learning and teaching team here in Auckland, and I'm interested in OER and in particular um, am helping out with the symposium that's happening in December. So yeah, I'm really interested to be involved. Thanks, Kath, and great to have you here as well. And staying in Auckland, um, we have Mandy from Toa Toa, assuming that you're in Auckland at the moment, Mandy. I am indeed in Auckland at the moment. Hi, everyone. Um, oh, goodness. So Toa Toa is an organization that grew out of the Creative Commons chapter for New Zealand. We tend to focus on open access to scholarship and open access to government information. Uh, but we're incredibly supportive of OER and want to do what we can to help make sure that this initiative can get off the ground and be successful. So thanks everyone, it's great to meet you. Likewise, Mandy, and I should note that Toa Toa is one of the founding organizations that has you know, signed up with the, the group, so it's great to have you here, Mandy, thank you. Thank you for having us. And um, staying, staying on the North Island, I see Nigel's on the list. Hi, Wayne, were you wanting me to? So I've been getting um, called out um, to oh. things in the... In oh, the okay, just do, just do a quick introduction and, uh, and then we'll excuse you while you're out. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, well, I'm um, Nigel Robertson. I'm at the University of Waikato and um, I work in a Centre for Tertiary Teaching and Learning. We've been promoting open education, um, you know, as broadly, in its sort of broadest forms as much as we can. Um, and a number of years ago, we got the university to adopt an open access policy. Uh, so um, along with uh, Lincoln at the time, we were sort of the, you know, first in New Zealand to mandate that all our research output should be deposited in our open access uh, repository. So, uh, and in terms of, in terms of, um, you know, OER, I think it's, you know, we've had an interest in it, particularly from a, a sort of equity perspective, trying to, um, you know, see how we can, you know, make education as available as, as possible to as many people as possible. But I, I guess, like lots of people, it, sometimes it's hard getting traction. And it is, and and, and it's yeah. and, it, and it's a long journey, and it takes time and requires patience. So um, yeah, it's all good. Um, I see next on my list, uh, Paul Stevens. Hi, um, I'm Paul 
I'm glad you could join us. Um, you know, Catalyst IT is also a founding member of the the Center for Open Education Practice. Paul, you might just want to check your microphone settings when when you go. It, it was breaking up a little. I'm not sure if the audio levels were set correctly. Um, but moving on, uh, Rachel. Uh, kia ora tato. Um I'm Rachel Wally from the VLN Virtual Learning Network Primary School. So uh, we work with online learners from throughout the country. I'm based in Mazata, Eastern Bay of Plenty, but I'm also in Taranaki just at the moment. Um, and I'm really interested in open access, equity to education, and all the things that makes it easier for teaching and learning online. And um, all the things in this space are quite centered around tertiary and I'm looking at how we can leverage off that to make opportunities in the schooling sector. Oh, and I, I'm, we, we're so pleased that we have representatives from the school sector uh, because I mean this really needs to be a national initiative and in other parts of the world there have been tremendous successes uh, with the adoption of, you know, of open education practice in the school sector so it's great to have you here. Glad you could make it. So moving back down again to the South Island, I have Ray on the list. Kia ora, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Excellent, wasn't sure. Too many different mute buttons. Okay. Uh, I, I'm Ray O'Brien. I'm also in the learning and teaching development team at uh, Otago Polytechnic. That's half of my job. The other half of my job is uh, at Capable New Zealand on the Bachelors of Leadership for Change. My involvement with OER has, uh, I guess, my eyes been open to it, arriving at Otago Polytechnic and seeing how uh, fundamental it was to, to some of our policies and what we do, and also been involved in developing some of the programs for the some of the courses on the OERU, which uh, has been a great experience. Thanks, Ray. Yeah, you, um, the introduction to project management is up and running, which is... Um, uh, a quite, you know, quite a popular course within the OERU network. So, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, next, next on my list, um, my colleague Simon, also down here on the South Island in Dunedin. Kia ora koutou. Uh, yes, Simon Wood. Uh, so, I'm also in the learning and teaching development team at Otago Polytechnic, um, and along with Claire Good, uh, seconded to OERU for about uh, two and a half days a week um so yes doing some uh, getting courses up and running on the oeiu uh, platform and that sort of thing uh, the other half of my time i'm spending uh sort of promoting educational technology within otago polytechnic um and yes apologies i'm going to have to leave in about a quarter of an hour as well no worries thanks Simon. Um, we have outstanding representation from Dunedin today. Um, next on the list is Trish. Kia ora. Sorry, I was having the same problems as Ray, is trying to unmute my microphone. Um, so, yeah, quite right, another representative from Otago Polytechnic. I'm the Director of Learning and Teaching Development. Um, so, lovely to see all our colleagues here with Ray, Simon and Claire. Um, and building a very strong working relationship with Wayne. So thank you very much for the invitation to be part of this. Thanks, Trish. And um, uh, again, thanks to the help from your team in you know, starting to help shape the, you know, the first symposium, which we'll chat a bit of, uh, as we move forward. Absolutely. Um, and staying in Dunedin, uh, next on the list is Veronique. Uh, thank you, Wayne. Um, it's lovely to be here. Um, Wayne spoke about the very long journey that Otago Polytechnic has been on in the open education resources space. Um, 
and I was involved at the, the start of that for a couple of years um, as an online developer. Um, and so maintain an interest in open education resources and how we can use it. In my current role, I'm in the people and culture team. And so I'm particularly interested in how we promote uh, professional development opportunities to staff and getting them involved more in using open education resources and understanding about um, copyright and creative commons and things like that. So thank you. Thanks, Veronique. Yes, you, you were there in the very beginnings. Um, in fact, I think before I even arrived at the Polytechnic. Um, the next item on the list is a user named Pascuit. So I'm not sure uh, uh, who, uh, who that is name-wise, but you can introduce oh, yourself. Yeah. Hi there. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Oh, cool. We can stand there and we can all see. Oh, I don't know what you want. Will it? Okay, um, so <laughs> there's three of us here today from um, our Institute of Canterbury. So I'm, um, and we're all from the, um, we've just actually recently changed our name to Aro Whakapikia, and we're part of the learning, learning resources team. That's also a new name for us, so <laughs> just get used to the new names. And, um, and, and your name? And Sorry. my name's Tina Bushua. Tina. Tina. Yeah. For short. For, sh for sure. Now, oh, yeah, it's come up, I don't know why it's come up like that, but it's without the T on the end. That seems to be my <laughs> username that's come up there for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think it's just your username. Yeah, it is. And, and who do you have with you there from Ara? Um, yep, so um, do you want to introduce uh, yes, yourself? Um, my name is Colleen Finity. Um, I'm a knowledge advisor, which is a fancy name for subject librarian. And we're very interested in open education resources, um, purely to create equity of access in education, reduce costs for students. Um, I guess my big interest is to see a push for um, New Zealand to create New Zealand content, because we have a lot of there's a lot, a lot of open um, education resources out there, but they're very American. Yep. So I'd love to know what um, we could make content-wise. Yep. No, that, that, that's, that is a gap that definitely needs to be filled. Um, so, I mean, let, you know, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the third person from... Oh, sorry, I'm Greta Christie, and I'm just new to this team. So, um, I'm a knowledge advisor, and I'm looking forward to um, hearing what this is all about. Yeah. We can all stand up and wave. Yeah, we can all stand up and wave. The camera, I'll be pushing the camera right first, so here we are. Good <laughs> night. <laughs> Well, I've already had a camera, apparently. But <laughs> we're all here and we're listening. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, and it's great to have Ara. Ara is also one of our founding uh, partners in the network. Um, so I'm going to quickly mute that. So that's done. And uh, next on the list, Dave Lane, back in Christchurch. Hello, all. Yes, yeah, so I work with Wayne in the OER Foundation, and I'm very keen obviously on OER in general and uh, I come at it from the technology perspective uh, and I do what I can to keep all of the technology platforms running that we use within the OER Foundation and the OERU and so I'm based in Christchurch uh, although technically I'm a colleague of those of you at uh, Otago Polytech because I'm also employed by Otago Polytech and um, I also wear the hat of being the president of the Open Source Society here in New Zealand. So uh, this um, aligns entirely with just about all of my uh, passions. So it's a very exciting thing to see this taking off. And I'm very grateful for all the rest of you for showing uh, and having an interest in it. Thanks, Dave. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, attempt to screen share here. And in theory, um, we should all be good. Is that coming to you for you, folk? Yep, I see heads nodding, so that's all good. Okay, so just uh, in terms of sort of open, transparent planning, one of the things that we typically do uh, is we keep transparent records of all our meetings, so, and, and we do that in a wiki, where, which gives the ability for anybody to actually edit uh, and make contributions to uh, you know, everything that we are doing. And so what, so what I've done is I've actually just created a, a planning page on Wiki Educator. If you look at the, uh, 
the URL at the top, you just add C-O-E-P uh, after wikieducator.org and you'll get to the planning page in, in Wikieducator. And then what, we, what we'll do is then we'll link all uh, pages, meeting agendas, any activities or, or you know, that, or activities that we're busy with that we'll have linked pages here from this main planning page so that everybody will have access uh, to all the content that we're working on. And as you'll see there, I've linked, this is our, you know, our first inaugural you know, get together. I've linked the first consultation meeting uh, from the main planning page. And if you, you know, click on that link, you'll get through to uh, a draft agenda, which, you know, we posted, which anybody could have added points uh, or added agenda items to if you wanted to. Uh, but given that this is the first meeting, you may not have been aware of that. So just that you know in advance, when we do schedule a meeting, you know, you'll be able to, you know, add any points you want to want to add to the agenda. So um, a rough agenda there, basically around updating what we've done and where we're at. Uh, we've been through the introductions. Uh, we've explained what the Center of Open Education Practice is. And we've started off with three main or three key initiatives. One is to make available free digital literacy courses um, as OER, of course, for all New Zealand learners. Um, and we were able to do that because the OERU has a set of courses uh, called, uh, or that they form part of the Learning in a Digital Age series. You'll see that there are, are four micro courses uh, that form part of Learning in a Digital Age. And we've made this available uh, to all New Zealand learners, either as additional support resources or any institution within New Zealand would be able to adopt and adapt these courses for um, local curriculum. Um, and so, for example, at uh, Otago Polytechnic's Academic Board has recently approved learning in a digital age uh, for all degrees that have elective, uh, electives in them. Um, and, and so, Otago Polytechnic learners would be able to take these courses for formal academic credit towards their own degrees uh, here at Otago Polytechnic. But similarly, being openly licensed, any institution uh, in New Zealand would be able to do the same and would be keen to promote and encourage that. But also perhaps, you know, providing support services through, um, you know, through libraries, for example, because many of the uh, learning outcomes that are covered here are well aligned with, you know, the inform information literacy curri you know, curricula. Um, so we announced the, the first cohort of this course, uh, early, uh, uh, it was, oh, I'll, I'll need to go back on the dates, or oh, let me look on the website here, I just want to call the exact date. On the 7th of August, we launched that, and we had uh, about 800 participants from 66 different countries uh, sign up for this cohort. Uh, roughly about uh, 50 to 60 uh, New Zealand participants. So, you know, that was a good start in terms of, you know, getting that uh, moving forward. The other initiative uh, which we're working on um, is the New Zealand Textbook Affordability Study. So a couple of years ago, around about 2015, I believe it was, the, uh, Otago University conducted a study on access to and the cost of textbooks at Otago University. And uh, fortunately, the, all the survey instruments were openly licensed. So we could quickly adapt and modify that original survey and launch a national survey uh, on textbook affordability. And that survey is running now at the moment. Uh, the closing date will be uh, the end of October. We'll chat a little bit more about that in a moment. To date, Thus far, we've had just short of 500 responses. Uh, so we'll, we are a, a, a little slow in terms of responses. So um, one of the things that would be extremely helpful within this group is to th think about ways we could potentially promote the survey with our own students and learners. Uh, the other initiative which we will be uh, launching soon is a little more professional development for educators, um, and we'll run a course. We ha the OERU has a course called uh, Digital Skills for Collaborative OER Development, which is really about building capacity 
in designing and developing OER using our, our open technologies. And we'll run a cohort of that course free for all you know, New Zealand educators who want to brush up their skills in how to develop OER in open environments, which we'll be running a little bit later this year. And then, of course, we are also uh, running, or le let me just leave it there for a moment and ask, are there any questions or any comments or any thoughts in relation to these three initiatives? They were you know, initiatives we could implement quickly because we had the resources um, as a starting point uh, you know, for the center. So let me just leave it there for a moment to ask if there are any questions, points of clarification, or any contributions you would want to make from the floor? And if you do want uh, to add a point, just um, you know, take the microphone and um, add. And in true open source tradition, we will take silence to mean assent. <laughs> Okay, it looks like we don't have any questions about the initiatives that we have uh, running at the moment. So moving on to the next point of, on the agenda in terms of our update, the inaugural uh, national symposium, which is scheduled for the 5th and 6th of December. Uh, we, uh, uh, there is a group at Otago Polytechnic that uh, is working on the planning for the symposium. Um, and maybe I can just ask some of the uh, Otago Polytechnic folk if they want to give us a brief update of where we're at, maybe Trish or, or Simon, uh, in terms of what we've done so far. Trish, are you still with us? I am still with you, sorry. Um, yes, so probably, gosh, when was it? Three months ago, we, we started working um, in collaboration um, on a symposium that we're hosting on the 5th of December, um, where we're really looking for, um, and it, it's with a focus on social justice um, and also open education. So we, we've put out a call for papers, um, and at this point I'm looking for responses and um, areas of interest in that. But what I might do, Wayne, I probably should have been a little bit more prepared and actually brought up where we are and looked at our themes. And I haven't got that on me. Um, Maybe. You're able to bring them up there. In theory, I should. <laughs> Fantastic. Wonderful. Uh, that's the call for submissions. Let me just... Um... Uh, where did we list the themes? Uh, probably more on our notes, but, but that's all. Yeah, it that's should okay. be here. Yeah. Uh, here. I think we've got to. Uh, if you click on the call for ab abstracts. Ah, oh, yeah, that's where it is. Thanks, Trish. Okay. And I'm just scrolling through. Um, so our sub themes that you can see there are social justice through open education, making education more sustainable through open education, leading change towards more open education and open education practices. Um, we are running the symposium um, over two days. The first day we're really looking at um, sort of our, having our keynote speakers, um, some workshops, and some, you know, overview, uh, people discussing of, you know, what they have done, how that is working, um, and also really wanting to lead in this area and show people and, you know, interested parties of how they can work with open education. Um, they too will actually be having some workshops where there'll be more of an opportunity to um, plan and create and implement. Um, so, you know, it's still um, in that process at the moment. 
um, I'm hearing the sound issues, I apologise. Um, we're still in the planning issues at the moment and, and really looking for abstracts. So we actually will put, use this platform as a, a call to put out abstracts, Wayne. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping everybody <laughs> sitting around this table will submit um, an abstract because, I mean, we, we've all got relevant experiences or relevant questions around open education. We, we, you know, we would love as many contributions as possible. Um, Absolutely, but but also um, you know in, in, a little shoulder tapping. I mean, I mean, each of us uh, will know people in our networks that um, you know have been doing interesting things, and whether you you know help us by shoulder tapping a few folk to say, hey, you know, come join us down in Dunedin and you know sh share your experiences uh, with us. Vis-a-vis um, -vis the workshop. Uh, scenarios um look i don't want to put mandy on the the, the you know um but I, i'm kind of thinking whether mandy you whether you'd be able to run one of your um workshops um you know with the you know the, the poker game you know to you know, help people and introduce folk um to you know the creative commons licensing suites we'd um, be happy to do that so, uh, uh, fantastic. So, Mandy, I'll, I'll, I'll have an offline conversation uh, with you and we can see if we can, you know, uh, provide a little support to bring you down to Dunedin. That would be awesome. Looking forward to it. That's wonderful. Thank you, Mandy. Sorry, just, um, it's going to be live streamed to the Auckland campus as well. Is that still, still the plan? Yes. Yeah, it is clear. So if, yeah, if you prefer to yep. go to um, the Auckland OPAIC campus, then that's also an option. Could have um, groups running there. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Und understood. So I'll have that conversation with Mandy, right? Um, and you, you can decide whether you prefer Auckland or Dunedin. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. <laughs> okay. I went, yeah, we went to ask you to make a commitment uh, live <laughs> in terms of preferences. Uh, so, any other questions uh, around this, the seminar call for papers? Thoughts for people we might want to shoulder tap? You want to say something about the keynotes, Wayne, maybe? Yes, we can. So, um, we're thinking of two keynotes at this stage. Uh, one, we've managed to confirm uh, David Porter, who uh, is the uh, Chief Executive Office, uh, Officer of eCampus Ontario in Canada. And they've done quite a lot of work around supporting uh, OER ambassadors throughout the province. And we thought it would be a good idea if David could share some of the experiences and successes they've had. and. So, you know, we can investigate locally to what, what extent they might be appropriate here. And our other keynote will be Associate Professor Sh uh, Cheryl Brown from the University of Canterbury, who will be keynoting on the results and findings of the National Textbook Survey. So Cheryl is helping us out with the survey that we're running. Um, and we thought that would be a, 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 a good set of data to introduce into the conversation, having, you know, authentic New Zealand data from, you know, what we've gathered from the survey to, uh, you know, get a sense of what the situation is at the moment. Yep. So those are the two keynotes we have. Any ideas and thoughts from the floor in terms of uh, potential folk we could shoulder tap or uh, contributions for the symposium? Or later thoughts would be, would be very happy to have if you want to, to sit and mull them over for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sitting thinking, Nigel, you might be able to have a conversation with the folk that worked on your open access policy. 
you know, um, you know, sharing the experiences of how that went. I, I mean, I don't know if those folks are still around at Waikato, but I mean, that would be a great contribution to have. We could also talk about our access to scholarly information one. Yeah, that would, that would be great, Mandy. I can certainly um, ask uh, Wayne, some of those folks are still still around. Um, yeah. It sort of feels, feels a little distant now, um, but um, I, I suppose it depends on how, how current it is for for other institutions i mean i'm i'm not quite sure who's still left to actually adopt a, an open access policy i think there's still a couple around uh, because from I, I could be wrong i mean I, you guys at waikato I, I think lincoln had one otago mm -hmm. has got um some kind of policy around open access. Yeah. I'm not sure if Auckland Uni has. Mandy, do you perhaps know? I think AUT have. Yes, I think, yeah, I think you're right. AUT does, yeah. Yeah, I think AUT does. I don't think that U of A does though. Yeah. So, I mean, kind of the value of, you know, going through that process is helping others mm. see what's, what's done, you know? What, we might even be able to do a, a sort of a panel presentation. Mm. And we reach out to the various folk that have been working on the open access policies at the universities. I think that, that would be really great to pull a panel together and maybe someone from the console OA group, yeah. they might be worthwhile too. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good idea, Mandy. So, so the console has their own uh, open access group, right? They do. They're working on open access to scholarly and sort of research information, but it might be really interesting to get that perspective and bring it in with the OER group. And they'll, the folks on that group will know what the OER initiatives are throughout the universities too. Mm -hmm. I think everyone but Vic has a rep, and I think Vic actually might have just gotten a rep on the group. Right. Okay. That, thanks for that, man. That's a good idea. Just making a note here. So that's around the symposium. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts and contributions from the floor? Okay, moving on then. Um, the next item here is just a couple of actions, and that, that you know they flow from what we've been discussing at the at the moment. We would really appreciate your help in promoting the textbook survey. Um, there is a page on the uh, the co website um, under the initiatives here. If you, go to the research with, under the textbook study. I mean, everything that you need to know about this particular survey, the ethics approval and all that stuff is there. But what we also have is a resources page here with uh, you know, a bunch of resources and ideas about how um, you know, folk might be able to promote the survey with tertiary education students. Um, so I just want to highlight that there are a bunch of resources which folk can use. What some of the universities have done, we've, we've uh, produced these uh, sort of promotional cards which could be used in social media. Um, and a number of institutions I know for a fact that Otago Polytechnic as well as Otago University have this uh, on the internal student TV, you know, showing the card, you know, promoting the survey. The other uh, avenue which I've seen has been quite productive is uh, if you know if you know or are friends with any lecturers, um, you know just that has been quite productive in you know asking a, you know, a couple of your mates to um, just let students know about the survey. It's a very short survey; it's only four minutes, 
And there is also a, a, a food voucher prize. Um, there will be a draw for $10, $50 food vouchers. So there is a little motivation for, for students um, you know, to, to complete the survey. But currently at the moment, um, I can tell you here, here's, we've got 486 full responses so far. Uh, we'd be keen to see that go a thousand plus if at all possible. So any help that you can provide in just for getting the word out to learners around the survey. Uh, provi provisional data is, is interesting. Um, the, we know well, from the responses we received so far, only 15% of the respondents are aware of the concept of open educational resources. Uh, which is quite interesting. I mean, we know that um, it, it's it obviously be quite low, but we are getting to a point where we're starting to quantify it. But the data that is particularly interesting is that 60% of respondents are, are reporting that lack of access to textbooks has had a negative effect on their academic performance. Um, and that is quite surprising that that number is so high. Um, so, I mean, I, I do think this is a worthwhile survey and just getting some baseline data around, you know, what the situation is with access to textbooks in New Zealand. So any help you can provide, uh, there is a resource page there. Please get in touch with, you know, lecturers in your institutions uh, to help promote this and particularly the polytechnic sector. Uh, Roughly only about 20% of the responses have come from the polytechnic sector. So those of us working in the, poly in the polytechnics, if you know, we can just get in touch with um, staff that are teaching on the degree programs. Uh, I suspect in trades, the, there won't be many textbooks being used, but certainly within the, you know, the, you know, the degree programs, they will. So we would really appreciate any help you can provide in promoting that survey. Uh, any questions about the survey? When I thought I might just jump in based on the chats because Rachel gave us a useful suggestion of sending it to Flan so they could put it out in their use newsletter, which I think would be great. Could I second that? I was going to say that if you can give me some text, I can send it out to our newsletter subscribers too. Fantastic, Mandy. Thank you. I'll, I'll send you the link uh, when we finished here. Oh, yes. And, and in relation to Flans, Flans has also offered to make it, uh, their journal available for publication from symposium papers. So we've had to offer and they have quite a bit of flexibility. They could either have a dedicated uh, journal issue uh, that relates to the conference uh, if there are enough you know, paper submissions. Um, or, you know, individual papers within planned issues. Uh, but I thought I'd just share that uh, Flans has offered to, you know, dedic uh, you know, provide us with a dedicated issue uh, for the symposium, which is pretty neat. So for those uh, looking for publications, um, that opportunity will be available. Sorry, Paul, your audio was breaking up badly. Would you be able to post in chat? Yes, please, Paul. I think that's a good idea. Um, let's reach out to the ITOs as well. Yep. Agreed. I mean, I think our main strategy so far has been to go through the student route. So we have a couple of researchers, um, PhD students at University of Canterbury who are sort of trying to get it up on, I don't know, student social media pages and going through the sort of student associations to get them to disseminate it to students. And, and obviously, as you can see from that, that's, in, I don't know, it's a bit of a hit and miss approach. So I think anything where there's a, a sort of a group we can target will, will really help. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think a multi-tiered and a multi-tiered and a multi-strategic approach is uh, uh, appropriate here. But I mean, the, the responses are coming in, and we've still got uh, you know a good number of weeks to go before uh, we, we shut the survey. So we're in a good place. But it will be uh, 
you know, we have to we have to outperform Otago University in the number of responses they got. They got about you know eight hundred or so, and I'm I'm keen to beat the competition. <laughs> Okie dokie, so that's in relation to the survey. Um, again, we've already mentioned, please, uh, you know, shoulder tap whoever you know to submit abstracts. Closing date is the end of September. And the last item I have on the agenda here that was posted before the meeting is I just encourage you to join. We've set up a, a chat channel using a piece of uh, open source software called Rocket Chat. Uh, for our main communication channel. Uh, you, you, you just go to chat.oeru.org. You can create an account there. And we do a good job of, uh, of monitoring that, uh, that channel. It's, you know, it's an open source alternative to technologies like, uh, like Slack. Um, so we're using that as our main communication channel. You can also set your preferences in such a way to receive email notifications of any mentions if you want to do it that way. Uh, rather than you know having to check into uh, the chat site uh, all, every time, so please join that chat channel. Um, so any questions or any contributions or ideas you would like to share, that's a good place to share them. I've got a um, quick question, Wayne. Um, just backing up yes. to the um, textbook survey. So, mm -hmm. um, what do you want to achieve out of the survey after the research is disseminated? Are you looking for um, uh, um, a greater support for open access textbooks from your findings, potential findings of the survey? What's sort of the long-term goal? It, it's a good question. I, I think our initial thinking around this uh, is really just to get baseline information from New Zealand tertiary students as to what the situation is. Um, you know, is the cost of textbooks an issue uh, for our learners um, is access to text an issue in New Zealand. Um, and then, you know, from that baseline data, of course, if it is an issue, to start thinking about what we can collectively do in promoting open textbooks uh, in areas of need, uh, for example. I should also point out uh, that this, this is an open science, open access study, that all the data we are getting in will be made publicly available under the public domain for any researchers in New Zealand who want, who want to use it and uh, examine aspects of the study. So it's, it's you know, an open initiative to, you know, see where we're at and to see if, you know, open textbooks is an area uh, that we should be pursuing in, in New Zealand. I'm not sure, has that, has that answered your question? Yep, sort of, because I know that it will lead on to other things. Um, yeah. The baseline. Um, I just had another quick question. I'm not sure if we're up to it on the um, agenda, um, but just this next um, cohort for the LIDAR 103, is that um, only for um, participants of the um, conference or can any no, other people? No, it's, it's, it's open to everyone. So, I, yes, I, thanks for reminding me. I forgot to mention that. Uh, we're running a a, a cohort of the open education copyright and open licensing micro course uh, in partnership with the world conference on online learning and that starts on the 7th of october but that cohort is available for everyone so any new zealand educators that want to participate in that cohort are most welcome to do so um, and so you know the, the course is running it's open so it's open for everyone yeah okay oh, Oh, Mandy, we might be able to get some of our teachers onto that. Your little sessions with them. Yes, definitely. We'll put it out there. Cool, much appreciated. That was kind of all on my initial list. Um, any, any other uh, points you would want to add to the agenda which haven't been covered? Hello, it's just Colleen Corley from um, Corley, um, from Christchurch here. I just out of, a, out of a matter of interest, it seems like Dunedin is leading the country on this. It seems to be the heart of it because they 
they were the first ones to, cope, to publish open access textbooks, weren't they? And that was it, 2014? Otago Polytechnic. Yes, yeah, so Otago Polytechnic adopted an open intellectual property policy defaulting all the educational materials to a Creative Commons attribution license back in 2007. Wow. Okay. Um, which was a big step forward, but, um, you know, to be fair as well, you know, uptake is, is slow, um, even though the <laughs> institution has an open, you know, a, an open policy, there's still a lot of work to be done around advocacy, supporting staff uh, in understanding, you know, what it is, you know, where to find resources, how to remix things. So, I mean, you know, it's a long journey. And to be fair, there are other pockets of, uh, you know, of innovation around the country that I'm aware of, and I'm sure others around the table would be able to share. Um, I know uh, Otago University had the f one of the first open textbook sprints in media studies, where they actually, over a weekend, developed an open textbook for media studies at, at Otago University. Um, they are, of course, the universities that have been adopting open access policies. Um, I'm sure there's been other work as well. Um, and anybody around the table, please share if you are, you know, are, are aware of, you know, any other open education initiatives. But uh, I mean, I'm not so. There's been a lot that's been happening out of Dunedin. I just think historically, because of the open access policy, the UNESCO chair. I mean, that's the reason why the UNESCO chair is located at Otago Polytechnic. Is because you know that that's where the first um, sort of open uh, intellectual property policy in New Zealand was. So you know that's a bit of the history. Yeah. Yeah, clever. <laughs> but the thing is, we you know we, we need we need to spread it nationally. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, oh yes, very much so, very much so. Yeah, yeah. Wayne, in in terms of uh, spreading it, what um, do you have any suggestions for other avenues to, uh, let's say, highlight the existence of this group and to uh, build its its sort of membership? I it. I mean, I again, I think it's also going to be a long uh, going to be a long a long journey to do to do so. I mean, what I mean, what this is with all open movements, it's. It's really the members who advocate, um, and you know, it's each, it's each of us who, who go out and do the promotion. Um, I mean, I think there are a number of things that we can potentially be doing. Um, one example is, um, and this is a, a little technical, but you'll appreciate it, Nigel. One of the things that we've integrated into the OVRU publishing platform is the ability to integrate uh, H5P objects. So um, that is uh, a, a, a very interesting project that enables uh, teaching staff to develop interactive um, content for the web as discrete little objects, and they're quite easy to develop. Um, but having that capability now on the OVRU platform, we could potentially have uh, run workshops, for example, for educators to develop a small little uh, H5P object for an open course that New Zealand has available. So it's something small that a fact, you know, an individual teacher can do quickly, but slowly be introduced to, um, you know, developing o OER content for sharing would be one example. Um, I know um, uh, Mandy through Toa Toa is doing amazing work around sort of the advocacy piece around uh, copyright and open licensing. Uh, I mean, and you know, we build on, on the work that's been done there. Yeah. I, was, I was wondering, let's say, you know, other, um, let's say it, it, things like educational conferences, you know, whether there's uh, the opportunity to have um, either, you know, somebody talk about the initiative or to have, you know, yeah. uh, posters or flyers about the, you know, just, um, you know, while, while you shared this in sort of organically, it sort of spreads out a bit. It, there's still a huge number of people who um, will have only had a passing awareness of OER, never mind 
uh, any awareness of this, yeah. you know, yeah. this initiative. Yeah. Uh, totally, Nigel. And I think that also relates to, I'm a part of this initial, this is kind of just, you know, getting off the ground, mm. you know, trying to get a bit of a critical mass together. I mean, in a proper open source tradition, I'd, I'd like to see us collectively as a group decide how we organize and run this collective. Um, I mean, for example, running the, the uh, an ideal solution for a national symposium would to have a scenario where it actually rotates around the country. So that different institutions could then take responsibility for running a national symposium next year. And, you know, we can start thinking about ways in which we organize ourselves, so to speak. So, I mean, that, that is an open conversation at this stage. There, you know, there have been no decisions taken as to how we organize ourselves and, you know, how we should operate and how we should work mm. and how we promote this. You know, this is just an initial start to get the conversation going. And perhaps that's something we should put on the agenda for for the next discussion is, you know, taking a deeper dive into brainstorming, you know, ways ways to promote it. What if I, I think? Can I throw in a little entrepreneurialism? In oh, please do. Please do. <laughs> from, from Venture Centre. So, um, one of the first things that we do, and I apologise, it might be somewhere and you can point me at it, but um, is who is your market? What are the personas of the people that you would like to be using this resource? What are their challenges? What do they think? What are they using right now? What are their barriers? Um, I haven't found anything in my, in my searching so far through the links that I've been sent, but... Um, uh, brainstorming is is fabulous, but um, it would be good to have it directed, <laughs> actually, yep. to, uh, to achieve the outcomes that you're that I think you're looking for, which could also be clarified <laughs> by doing that work on on some personas. Yeah, totally agree, Joe. I mean, that might actually be something worth doing. Is you know having an open document somewhere where we actually try and define those personas collectively as a group. You know, who are we trying to serve? How are we trying to serve? You know, serve them um, to help inform the next steps and um, that's the kind of entrepreneurialism which is uh, traditionally lacking among open educators like ourselves we we're very good at doing open education we're very bad at marketing our, marketing ourselves so you know, that's a good place to start then right who's the market <laughs> what does it consist yeah, of to totally what are they so, so any, any help you can provide us and you know, getting us on the right track is well received <laughs> that sounds like a great workshop for the symposium. That's a really good idea, Ray. <laughs> Should we lead it together? <laughs> okay. Deal. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Brilliant. Deal. Done. Well, so I'm, okay. I'm managing, I'm managing that. Joe and um, Ray are going to run the workshop around the personas. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much. Both of you. You're welcome. Great. Any other thoughts? We're getting up to the top of the hour. Any other pressing issues? No, they're not too pressing. I'm hearing silence. Um, so just, just from our desk, uh, the team here at Otago Polytechnic, a big, big thank you for your time and coming together just for this initial discussion. And I'm going to look forward to your contributions in, you know, helping to shape these open futures, uh, you know, working together. So um, it's it's a slow start, but it's an you know it's an important one, I think. So much appreciated. Glad you could make it. Thank you, Wayne. Thanks, Wayne. See you, everyone. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Bye, Wayne. Thank you. Thanks, Mandy. Bye. 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 We can make it